Hey guys, so of course we're still waiting on that ban list, you know, bit of a slow news day really, but you know what, in the meantime I was kind of interested in the sort of, at least what it seemed like, a rise in a lot of the stun decks that are uh, seeing, you know, competitive play, so I kind of wanted to do a breakdown in terms of, you know, how much top cut representation they're actually taking up, as well as some of the like most popular kind of floodgates and staples that are being played in these lists, uh, just so you're aware as you uh, still approach the kind of regional level events. And as always, don't forget to check out my discount codes for Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, uh, as well as sleeves. Uh, Links and discount codes in the description below. I also want to shout out YGOproduct.com as well as Ivan as always for their spreadsheets and just maintaining all the YCS and regional level topping information. Definitely could not have done this video uh, without their support. Alright, so first let's just look at you know how much of the regional top 8s uh, the stun decks are actually taking up uh, week by week because it certainly seemed like you know they've been kind of increasing and you know I feel like half the decks I'm playing on DB nowadays is just like stun. So anyways, post January 1st when the ban list first came into effect, this is kind of what like the trend has looked like. Of course the first couple of weeks after January 1st, you know, we had uh, before Maze of Millennia and then we eventually got that but still before Phantom Nightmare and then the last almost two months has been Phantom Nightmare format, right? So you know, earlier uh, uh, since the January ban list, uh, really, there wasn't much stun popping. I mean, realistically, you know, sure, stun is topped here and there every now and then, uh, but we haven't really seen much of that, you know, after Mystic Mind got banned, then there were like runic kind of stun decks, but there weren't that many of them. But nowadays, you know, in the most recent weekend in particular, 5.8% of all topping decks, uh, they were stunned, at least at the regional level. And technically, you could argue that's not a lot, but at the same time, okay, sure, you know, Snake Eye, Snake Eye, Fire King, those are the most represented, and then followed by Voiceless Voice. But, you know, 5.8% is actually still 7th most uh, represented deck. It's actually almost in terms of uh, the level of um, representation for something like Branded Espia, Keshtira, as well as Thunder, and those decks are, of course, you know, pretty notable in this current format, even in, you know, quote-unquote tier 0 format. So, it's not, uh, it is still a pretty notable difference. Now the funny thing is though at the YCS level, uh, it actually turns out that there weren't any stun decks except for the most recent one uh, in Colombia just uh, the past weekend where it came second I believe, uh, I was like runic stun, so really other than that one outing, uh, stun actually hasn't had any success at a YCS level but definitely still a decent amount at the regional level which, you know, let's be real, for almost all of us, we're probably playing at regional level at best, you know, we don't, we're not, probably most of us are not the type to travel to every YCS event but of course for those of you who do, uh, at least you don't have to worry too much about uh, stun in the top cut. So also in terms of, you know, what kind of stun decks they are, because there's, uh, turns out, some bit of variety. Now, this is just based on the 29 topping lists that were available, uh, and this is post-January 1st, although most of them are actually from March. So, you know, most are runic decks, uh, runic stun, that's not really that surprising. I mean, runic in general kind of supports kind of like this kind of stally game plan, you know, and you have a lot of interruptions and you just kind of regain resources back and being able to draw in a floodgate kind of deck is really important as well. Uh, you have some horror stuff, which is kind of interesting, a little bit of a uh, different uh, variation, I guess, something that we're not really used to. And then sort of the quote unquote pure, this is more so involving like the dogmatica stuff. And then there was actually even like one like branded list uh, with a bunch of floodgates that also topped. Now you may think, well, you know, the reason people are, a lot of people are going stun is that, you know, it's a cheaper way to play competitively right now, and that is technically true. This is actually a slide that I uh, had shown in my regional top cut breakdown uh, just under a week ago. So the prices are based about a week ago, but at the same time, nothing really changed in terms of market anyways for these decks. So, you know, sure. The cheapest uh, topping list was about $76, but on uh, like a medium price was around $255, which is still kind of hefty. And the reason for that is A, you know, a lot of them are runic variants, right? The runic package, while not super expensive, it still has some cost to it. And not to mention, you know, horror stuff is also expensive if you play with that route. And then uh, on top of that, you have something like, you know, the extra deck, technically, a lot of them are playing something like SP and Typhon, which you really don't read, uh, need, rather. So, you know, the price, I think, if you look at it surface level, it's probably a little misleading you don't actually need a lot of those expensive cards in these stun decks uh, really you can play it very cheap and probably still do uh, decently well and I just wanted to show a few of the different kind of stun decks in terms of quickly the deck list. Of course, the most common ones like the Runic variant. This is the one that came second at the YCS this past weekend. A uh, couple notes, you know, this time tiering Morganite, by the way, is like really crazy. Like, you know, being able to draw two, being able to normal zone twice every turn, it's insane. Uh, sure, you don't get to activate monster effects in the hand, which basically means you don't play hand traps, but that's fine. You're playing Runic stuff a lot of times, and Runic stuff takes up a lot of your list anyways, and their spells. So on top of that, you have something like Synchro Zone, which has been a pretty popular 
nuclear floodgate lately where you know only basically synchro monsters can attack which is uh, in a format like right now where you don't really have a lot of synchro uh, going on right i mean i guess pure snake has uh, some synchro monsters but you know and centurion has really fallen off as well and branded of course can't play anything other than fusion so yeah it's actually a pretty strong floodgate right now and then like the Horus version, it seems like you're just kind of using like the Horus stuff as well as even Fenrir just to give yourself a special summon body so you can just tribute it off for like something like a Vanity's Fiend for a special summon lock or like a Majesty's Fiend for, you know, the monster effect lock. And I guess in the instance where you can't get to those locks, I mean, you still have all these kind of like floodgates uh, that are uh, quite, quite powerful to keep uh, them at bay. And then finally, the sort of the quote-unquote pure slash, you know, Dogmatica style of stun is, you know, with like the, uh, you have the Dragon and the Apache, but you also have something like the uh, Dogmatica stuff, which uh, the Decisive Battle of Gondola, so that's the continuous spell you see here before evenly match, and that is something to look out for because it does protect, like, you know, from battle or card destruction, their cards, so, you know, like something like you're probably siding in, like, Feather, Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, and so you do have to be mindful of, let's say, they start with, like, an Ecclesia Summon, Perhaps if you have an Imperm, you have to actually kind of Imperm that in case, you know, they get to the Gondola, which if they haven't drawn already, of course, otherwise, you know, your Feather Duster, that kind of stuff, that's going to be dead. And they also even get to send something like uh, Titanic Cloud to the grave as well with that spell, which then actually gets them to access another Ecclesia and get like something like the Black of Punishment as well. So these are uh, some things to watch out for. Uh, Necro Valley is not necessarily new. This is something we saw a lot during tier format as well. And this actually is still pretty strong in a Snake Eye format as well. Now, in terms of a hand trap overview, this is something that I do with, you know, YCS or regional level top cut breakdowns. And for hand traps, as I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, in the main deck, median number was zero, right? Uh, and, you know, at least about almost a month ago when I did this, uh, it was 14 for all decks in general. It's a very high hand trap format because something like Snake Eye, they can play so many hand traps. But with uh, the stun decks, again, something like Time Tier and Morganite, if they play it, they're not going to be able to play hand traps anyways. So really, they're going to be focusing more on, you know, floodgates and maybe board, board breakers. And in the side, also median was si uh, zero. So we talked about those going second board breakers. I should note uh, something like Runic, uh, Freezing Curses, you know, Destruction, uh, Flashing Fire. I classify that as board breakers still because, you know, you know, they can destroy a spell trap or a special summon monster or monster negation. Like those are still uh, kind of like going second board breaker cards or at least can be. Uh, not perfect, of course, but at the same time, that's why the median number of, you know, board breakers is very high with these decks uh, just because most of them are Runic. And as I mentioned, some of those runic cards, I did classify them as board breakers and median number of seven in the side as well. So a little uh, higher than, you know, some of the other decks. And then now, lastly, just to cover some of the most common floodgates and staples in these uh, stun decks, excluding runic cards out this time around. Uh, so the first is skill drain. So most lists, almost every list that were at least available, uh, they were playing this uh, card. Uh, and also not to mention, uh, if they were playing it, they were main decking it always. So you know what? I don't know why this came back to three, uh, really. Hopefully Konami puts it back to at least one. I really don't think this should be around at three. At the same time, at least though, among all the different kind of floodgates, this is actually one where you can play around a lot easier or I should say a little bit easier and there are some creative workarounds as well which I think has always been pretty cool uh, next you have Solemn Judgment this is very typical of kind of backward heavy decks because you know they're going to be siding something like you know Feather Duster evenly match whatever uh, and you need to be able to have a way to stop it because they're really not monster heavy so they're not going to have like some kind of Omni Negate monster setup for the most part and then you have some floodgates, like there can be only one, you know, rivalry goes a match. Uh, while they did uh, limit them, which is kind of nice to see that they actually hit some floodgates, you know, at the same time, as long as they're legal, uh, people are going to play it in stun decks. And especially when you have, uh, there can be only one and rivalry, uh, which case basically means you can only ever have one monster in the field. So it doesn't matter what kind of typing your deck has, you know, as long as you have multiple of these, uh, it's going to be pretty insane. But luckily it is just at one. Uh, Inspector Border is kind of like the Floodgate monster of choice that looks like uh, incredibly strong, uh, you know, level 4 normal summonable body that's 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense. I mean, talk about power creep, right? You know, back in the days where like an 1,850 attack uh, for level 4 was considered really good. And nowadays, you know, you have this uh, beat stick that doesn't have any drawback and if anything has a really, really good effect as well. Uh, and then something like Goza Match, which I already alluded to. Uh, and then you also have a Mono Wado. This is another kind of floodgate monster that's pretty popular. Uh, the one thing with this one is that it basically, you know, it also prevents like hand traps being played, right? Or rather being played against you when the stun player goes first. And something like, let's say, Card of the Mize, like you can't get Ash if you at least have this on the board and it just kind of comes back to your hand as well. And then you also have Evenly Matches. This is also in general, again, among Runic decks, it has been pretty popular card of choice just because, you know, the Runic spells take up a lot of their uh, deck count and they kind of need kind of like these blow-up cards. 
uh, you also have Rivalry, which I spoke to earlier, which is actually quite, quite good, this format as well, uh, against, you know, Snake Eye, Branded, for example. Uh, and talking about Branded, uh, Grave of the Super Ancient Organism is basically FTK against that strategy, and whether you go first or second, you have this, and you're going to win against Branded. Uh, for the most part, it is sided, if it was played at all. And then, of course, I guess some backward decks. Uh, the stun decks need some backward removal themselves as well, I guess. Maybe for the mirror. I honestly don't even want to imagine what the mirror is going to be like. Uh, you also have Lava Golem. Cards like this, Sphere Mode, you know, pretty, pretty good uh, in terms of just being able to tribute over things where really, you're not going to be able to stop that. Uh, it is a fire, though, for Lava Golem, which might, I guess, come up, uh, I guess, on a, against Fire King. Uh, again, some more back row removal in Cosmic, which is, uh, again, particularly important in something like when you have a lot of Runic decks uh, with these stun decks, but also something like that Decisive Battle of Gondola I mentioned, where it has that kind of card destruction protection. Uh, Jogun, we've talked about this in terms of Floodgate monsters. Uh, one thing with Jogun, of course, you do also sometimes see it in something like Voiceless Voice, where they're playing branded stuff, and Sanctifier uh, can just kind of shoot this out, and they get, like, battle targeting protection as well. So, sure, Sanctifier will, I'm sure, get banned, at, uh, hopefully soon, uh, in the next list. But at the same time, you know, Jogun will probably still see it around if stun decks continue to exist even post the ban list. Uh, then you have Summon Limit, which I was kind of surprised that it actually wasn't seeing as much play, I guess, in terms of the other Floodgates we've seen. I guess there's just a lot of good Floodgates, and if you're actually a stun-focused uh, deck, then you, you, know, you know, can play a lot of these other Floodgates that uh, you know, most of the lists cannot play, which Summon Limit for something like you know, Snake Eye has been very, very popular, and for a lot of decks, really, just meta decks in general, has been a popular side choice, but because it's a Floodgate, you know, a lot of decks can just play. Uh, but of course, I guess in stun decks, you know, they have some other better options to play as well. And lastly, we have Sphere Mode, similar to the likes of Lava Golem, uh, can be really good. You know, most decks cannot actually really play Lava Golem in Sphere Mode, you kind of need your normal summon, but, uh, I mean, stun decks, usually they only have a few monsters to summon to begin with, so, I mean, you can play this and it's going to be a pretty, pretty strong board wipe. Anyways, guys, that was it for a quick little overview of stun decks. You know, definitely not fun to play against, but of course, it can provide a cheaper way to stay relevant in the current meta, and especially for players that are kind of new and kind of starting and coming into the game. This technically is a pretty good option to at least get the basics down for Yu-Gi-Oh! and actually still have a pretty decent chance at doing well at competitive events. Although, of course, you're probably going to piss off a lot of people, but hey, that's just the nature of the game. So anyways, guys, huge thanks to all of you for watching. Big thanks to my patrons and sponsors, as always, for the continued support, and well, take care, guys.